Hello again, everybody. We're so glad to be back with you this week for Him Speak. And we have another great request. Who, can we tell who requested this one? Yes, please. Very important person. Yes, because I want this to be a good mark on my chart. Tommy Reagan. Tommy Reagan. The right. husband. The husband. But he loves this song very much. And so we wanted to do this song for him. Yes. Let me ask you a question. What is the one thing that you would wish for above all other things? Well, peace of mind, just calm, calmness, peace of mind. We don't have any of that right now, do we? No, ma'am. It's terrible, uh, the situation we find ourselves in. And I find my, I'm not a person who is easily uh, in um, a state of depression. Mm -hmm. But during this time, I find that things creep in that I have to put at bay because it's like the darkness mm -hmm. is pervading our world. But the Lord has given us some great verses of Scripture that tell us what peace really is and how we can attain it. In Isaiah 26, 3, it says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Another great verse is John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing. And boy, do I have a problem with that. I have signs in my house that says, uh, Don't worry. Mm -hmm. uh, simplify. Yeah. But do I do that? Not always. But I love this because it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. 1 Corinthians 14.33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. This is the story behind the song that I'm going to sing today, Peace in the Valley. Thomas Dorsey was born in 1899, the son of a minister in Georgia, in a small town outside Atlanta. His mother, a music teacher, taught him to play the piano as a child. And as he grew into his teens, he was drawn into the world of jazz music. At the age 17, he moved to Gary, Indiana, pursuing a musical career. Thomas was torn between blues music and his Christian training. The stress was so intense that he suffered a nervous breakdown and was recuperating for two years. During that time, he had become a member of the Pilgrim Baptist Church in Chicago and began to play a major role in directing the music of the church. He would write hundreds of songs, including this one. Thomas would become the best known African-American composer of gospel music in America. Thomas wrote this hymn in 1937. It was shortly before Hitler sent his war chariots into Western Europe. Thomas was on a train going through southern Indiana on the way to Cincinnati when he passed through a valley on that train. Horses, cows, and sheep were grazing together in that little valley. A little brook was running through it. Everything seemed so peaceful it caused him to wonder what is wrong with mankind. As he traveled, he wrote down the words to this hymn. The tune he would set it to seems to be a mix of gospel, blues, and country. Country singers picked it up and by the 1960s, it would become one of the 10 best known country gospel songs of all time. President Lyndon B. Johnson, before his death, requested that this hymn be sung at his funeral. Anita Bryant was chosen to fulfill that request. Well, I'm tired and so weary but I must go along till the Lord comes and calls me away. Well, the morning's so bright and the Lamb is the light and the night, night is fair as day. Someday 
Oh. 